So who is this person, John the Baptist? We know quite a bit about him from the Gospels. If you were at Mass on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception and listened to the Gospel, when Mary was asked by the Archangel Gabriel to become the mother of the Messiah, she said yes. She was also told in that same conversation that your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son in her old age, and she is now in the sixth month of her pregnancy. If you continue from that passage in Luke's Gospel, you'll see that Mary went immediately to visit her relative Elizabeth because she was an older woman. Perhaps she'd have a difficult pregnancy and delivery, so she wanted to be there to help her. And it says in the Gospel that she stayed with Elizabeth about three months. So if Elizabeth was six months pregnant, Mary stayed three months, perhaps she was there for the delivery of her son, may even acted as a midwife, as many women did for their friends. And that son to be born was John the Baptist. We celebrate his birthday on June 24th, so he is six months and one day older, if you will, than Jesus Christ. And it seems that the two were related in some way. Were they cousins, first cousins, uncle, nephew, I'm not sure, but relatives. But they did not grow up together. Jesus grew up in the northern part of Israel, in the town of Nazareth, and John the Baptist was in the southern part of Israel, the Judean desert. It seems as, like a young man, he went to live in what we today would call a monastery or cloistered house, cloistered community, a place called Qumran. And there he lived most of his life till perhaps a year or two before Jesus began his public ministry. So John would have been maybe 28, 29 years old when he began to preach about a Messiah that would be coming soon into the world. Three very important things about John the Baptist that I think are challenges to all of us. First of all, he lived in the desert. Now, most uh, spiritual writers and authors, uh, directors, will tell all of us should go out to the desert once in a while. That's easy for us because we live in the desert too. But you can go to the desert if you live in New York or Miami or Chicago or Dallas or Seattle or L.A., the desert is a place of mind, a place of spirit, if you will. It means a quiet place. It could be a quiet place in your home. It could be a backyard. But again, here in the Mojave Desert, where we live, we can go out to the desert. 15 minutes from now, you can be at Red Rock. So I ask you, no, I challenge you, I dare you to go out to the desert this week. You can literally go to the desert again, just drive away from your house, and you're there in a few minutes. Or find a quiet place and a quiet time sometime this week to be like John the Baptist in the desert, alone, quiet, communing with nature, communing more importantly with God. This is the busiest season of the year. Of the year. We hear prepare the way of the Lord in our readings today. Most of us think that means get all our Christmas shopping done, get the house decorated, plan the Christmas menu. It's a busy time. And so the church is somewhat countercultural and asks us to slow down, to be quiet, to be calm, to enjoy some peace. So that dare that I give you is will you dare to take five minutes, ten minutes, a half hour this week and just be quiet. Close the doors, go somewhere all by yourself. No props, no rosaries, no Bibles, just you and God. And spend some time. Let John the Baptist be your guide. The second thing about John the Baptist was that he was very, very humble. He knew his place. He was very popular. If you listen to the gospel today, it says that the whole Judean countryside, that's southern part of Israel, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, went out to hear John the Baptist preach. He was mesmerizing. He was charismatic. They were jumping in the Jordan River to confess their sins. Many thought he was the Messiah, and that could have gone to his head. They could have said, well, I'll play the game for as long as I can get away with it. I'll be popular. Maybe I'll even make some money. But no, he knew that he was just the precursor, the advance man, the announcer of the Messiah. As he said in the gospel today, I'm not even worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. A humble, humble man. 
My favorite line of John the Baptist is read in the gospel on the last day of the Christmas season before we return to ordinary time in January. John pointing to Jesus says, he must increase and I must decrease. That's the challenge for all of us. God must increase in our lives and my ego, my selfishness must decrease. Because all of our problems, I think, are based on ego, pride. We do things our way instead of God's way. We know the law, we know the commandments, we know the difference in right and wrong, but every time we do it our way instead of God's way, we feed our ego. During this Advent season, let John the Baptist be your model. May Christ increase in our lives and may our selfish, egotistical ways decrease. Maybe like Paul the Apostle, we could say eventually, now it is no longer me, but Christ who lives in me. That's our Advent goal, our lifelong goal. And the third aspect of John the Baptist that I love is that he introduced people to Jesus Christ. As I said, he had his own followers, his disciples. When Jesus came to the River Jordan, he said, there he is, the Lamb of God, the one I've been talking about. Leave me and start to follow him. And we can do the same. We can lead others to Jesus Christ. We can bring others to Christ. You can invite them to Christmas Eve or Christmas Day Masses. That's wonderful. We always get the crowds. You can invite them the following Sunday, all the Sundays of 2024. But the best way to lead people to Christ is what they see in you, your example, your words, your actions. Remember, in the early church, Christians were not allowed to be public about their faith, but somehow they knew who those Christians were. By that old Catholic song in the 1960s and 70s, they'll know we are Christians by our love. So bring others to Christ, as did John the Baptist, by your love, your words, and actions. John the Baptist, our Advent prophet, I dare you to spend some time in the desert like John the Baptist did most of his life. I ask you to be like John the Baptist, to be humble, to put down your own selfish ways and be giving to others, and most of all, make Christ the center of your lives. And I ask God, John the Baptist, to bring others to Christ by the way you live your lives. May Christ come into our lives this Christmas in a new and special way through how we live out our lives.